This is Lieutenant Greg. Like most young, ambitious humans following the formation of the Galactic Empire, Greg joined the Imperial Navy, eventually landing himself a modest position on an Imperial Star Destroyer as a data specialist. One day, his Star Destroyer was boarded by Darth Vader, who was searching for an assassin who had breached into the Imperial data banks and later broke into one of the Empire's prisons. While this was the official duty of business Vader was tasked in undertaking, the only thing on his mind was finding the surviving Jedi Knight who was believed to have been connected with this assassin. But Vader had to keep this on the down low, as he had already been reprimanded numerous times by Palpatine over his obsession in hunting Jedi, committing his time and resources hunting down an already defeated enemy, rather than acting as a proper enforcer for the Empire that was trying to establish itself across the galaxy. With the task on the surviving Jedi being placed on the Inquisitors and other Darksiders Palpatine had as servants. Hours went by as Vader waited within the communications room while all the data specialists attempted to link an identity to the assassin that had breached the databanks. Then finally Greg spoke up, mentioning he received a report of another data breach that contained the theft of an after-actions report of Imperial vessels. Initially, the captain overseeing the operation dismissed Greg's findings as a waste of time seeing no relation to them and the data breach into an Imperial prison halfway across the galaxy from these Imperial vessels, but then Vader stepped in, suggesting otherwise. Either through the Force itself, or just his gut telling him, or maybe Vader simply wanting a good reason to leave the tedious data collection station, the Sith Lord informed the Captain that what Greg found was good enough, and requested the Lieutenant to come with him. This hunch of Vader's became correct, as Greg's discovery did ultimately lead them to finding the Assassin's location, with the addition of the possibility of the Jedi Knight as well. Greatly pleased with this, Vader had Greg come down with him as the Sith Lord made his way toward the Assassin's last known location. The Assassin, whose name was Falco Sang, was captured almost immediately on the arrival of the Sith Lord, with Greg then being tasked with interrogating the man on everything he knew about the Jedi Knight that he believed to have been hunting. Impressed with Greg's skills from earlier, Vader made the Lieutenant his right-hand man and go-to guy in finding Jedi secretly behind Palpatine's back, to fuel the Sith Lord's need in killing them all. In other words, Greg became Vader's Jedi dealer. With this promotion and praise from Vader, Greg spent countless hours doing just that, going through numerous reports that could hint of the location of a surviving Jedi. As a result, he became one of the few Imperial officers Vader liked and gave attention to, with many of Greg's peers calling him Vader's pet out of envy. Another task the young lieutenant was given was training up the assassin, Falco Sang, that had been captured earlier. The Empire valued strength and intelligence, but only when it was used for its own means, so Vader had the Falco Sang trained to be later used in the Sith Lord's future Jedi hunting missions. While at first Falco Sang was unruly in his new position of being trained to work for the Empire, he eventually came to respect Vader after the Sith Lord impressed him with his skill in starship tech after he upgraded Falco Sang's personal ship for service. Greg and the Falco Sang also started their relationship off on the rough foot for obvious reasons, but the two ultimately became friends, with Falco Sang even defending their new nicknames as Vader's pets by standing up against the other officers that mocked the two behind their backs. Now Darth Vader had a whole secret team set up with Greg finding the Jedi and Falco Sang being tasked on the ground of ensuring the Jedi would not escape once Vader came to hunt them, but secrets like these rarely remained hidden from Palpatine and his network of spies who informed the Emperor of what Greg was doing. Seeking to punish Vader in a manipulative manner, Palpatine decided to bait his apprentice by giving him exactly what he wanted, a Jedi to fight, but with a catch. The Jedi knew they were about to be attacked, having caught Palpatine's spy that originally informed him of their existence. As such, a trap was going to be set to any Sith Lord that was going to come after them. Palpatine knew this, but wanted Vader to not. So one late night, one of the many that Greg was up attempting to find Jedi for his master, he received a random call. Initially, he dismissed it, assuming it to be one of the other officers, but then he heard the caller's voice. It was Emperor Palpatine himself. Shocked to be receiving a random call from the ruler of the Empire, especially so late at night, Greg nearly fell out of his chair when he saw Palpatine's hologram staring right at him. At first, Palpatine mockingly praised Greg for being such a young man who took his work so seriously and with such diligence that he stayed up all night to complete it. He then cut to the chase, demanding what exactly Greg was doing for Vader. Knowing full well it was not wise to lie to the Emperor, Greg confessed that he had been secretly searching up data logs for Vader in hopes of locating Jedi for him to hunt. Knowing far well he was caught red-handed in this act, Greg slouched down awaiting his punishment. But to his surprise, no punishment was given, but rather approval from Palpatine to carry on with his duties, 
and that he was not to speak of this interaction between the two of them with Vader. Now having confirmed that Vader was indeed going behind his back in hunting Jedi, Palpatine decided to leak his findings toward the Jedi laid trap. After confirming them with his spies and having the exact data of the Jedi's location, Palpatine called Greg back shortly after their first call, surprising the young man once more. This time he simply gave Greg the data and told him once again to not speak of their interaction to Vader. Once the call ended, Greg made haste to get his findings to Lord Vader. Speeding down the Coruscant airways, Greg stormed into Vader's primary residence on the city planet. Sprinting down the building's hallways and shouting Vader's name, Greg got to his master a bit too quickly, as when he ran into the Sith Lord's meditation chamber, the Dark Lord had yet to fully put his suit back on, with them making awkward eye contact as Greg witnessed what Vader looked like without his mask on. Also, this is one of the rare moments that Vader's face is shown as he looked like during the early years of the Empire, with him still looking like a young man in his 20s. Nonetheless, the lieutenant quickly told him that he had discovered a Jedi, with him looking away as Vader completed putting his suit and helmet on. Beyond pleased with Greg having done his duty in locating a Jedi for him, Vader ignored the officer's unprofessionalism in barging into the meditation chamber without permission, and simply ordered him to get his shuttle ready for takeoff, where he was finally going to hunt a Jedi. Vader arrived at the planet that the Jedi was believed to be on in an entire Star Destroyer. During the briefing of the upcoming battle, the other officers quickly realized how suspicious the whole situation appeared, with it being obvious to them that the enemy had clearly had time to prepare for an incoming attack and that the entire place was likely booby-trapped. With this now the case, the officers suggested to simply bomb the enemy location from orbit with the Star Destroyer, but Vader was too stubborn, wanting to kill the Jedi by his own hand. So a ground assault force was readied, with Greg being put in charge of the commanding staff. While Vader and his clone stormtroopers moved through the narrow bridges, the other officers were mocking him behind his back, simply astonished at how foolish the attack was without air support. And as they predicted, the bridges exploded right when the bulk of the ground troops moved through them. With them starting to lose precious troops, one of the officers ordered for air support, but Vader shut it down, later telling Greg to shoot any of the officers if they attempted to interfere with his plans again. No one was going to get in his way in spilling the blood of Jedi in his own hands. As the advance continued, more and more traps were set off, killing countless cloned stormtroopers and destroying numerous vehicles. Finally, when the Sith Lord arrived at the front gate, the gate opened up with a flood of fuel spilling through. Knowing full well what was about to happen, Vader jumped to high ground, watching his troopers be drenched in the fuel from the distance. Then the expected happened with a flame being thrown from the gate's entrance, which ignited the fuel, exploding all the troopers that were within its area of effect. But like the Jedi addict that he was, even that didn't stop Vader, who despite being on fire as the flames reached him, jumped from his position right toward the gate's entrance head first. He burst through, shouting to be faced with the Jedi he had come for, and the Jedi he had been looking for this entire time had finally revealed himself, or so he thought. The duel between the two quickly began. His foe was far more powerful than initially anticipated, with the Jedi Master damaging the Sith Lord with powerful force attacks as he launched heavy machinery at the Dark Lord. As the fight neared its end, the Jedi Master eventually revealed to Vader a detonator that was linked to exploding the entire building they were fighting in. It quickly became clear that the Jedi the Sith Lord was fighting was not the one he had originally come for. The Jedi Knight he had been searching for this entire time was still in hiding, and that the Jedi he was fighting right now was just a random one that was protecting his main prey that he had spent so much time seeking. The random Jedi attempted to interrogate the Sith Lord on why he was so interested in hunting down the one that he was protecting, but Vader simply stated that he was in it for all the Jedi. After that quick back and forth between the two, the Jedi Master decided to end it and sacrifice himself by exploding the two of them. But before he could do that, Vader chucked his lightsaber and sliced the Jedi's arm off that was holding the detonator, preventing him from turning it on. On his knees now following that attack, Vader demanded to know where the other Jedi was, but was refused an answer. A simple strike at the Jedi was then followed, with the Sith Lord's craving on killing them all only slightly satisfied. Vader later discovered Palpatine's spy that had originally discovered the Jedi, but the Sith Lord had no idea of who he was or what his purpose was. All he knew that he was once a former Jedi that was now working for Palpatine, so his life was also ended as Vader cut him down, possibly out of fear of being replaced, maybe out of anger as he realized how his Sith Master had set this whole thing up for him or perhaps out of rage of not being able to fight the Jedi Knight he had been searching for all this time. As the spy's body fell to the ground, it caused the detonator from before to activate, which exploded the entire building Vader was in. Vader was barely able to escape, with him hanging onto a metal bar before being rescued by Falco Sang, 
who flew right in to pick up his new master. Despite all this trouble Vader had gone through just to kill a single Jedi, or two in his mind following the death of the spy, his hatred for them was only amplified as he realized how far they would go in protecting one another, with his efforts only being increased as a result of all that had transpired. Thanks for watching this video. Help support the channel by becoming a member on our Patreon page. And be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.